Our other guests, Ernie Dingo and Jeffrey Rush with Kaz Cook, my co-host on The Conversation Hour on 774 ABC Melbourne, ABC Victoria, the World Wide Web and Digital Radio as well. Jeffrey, Ernie, Ross, Kaz, the College of the Arts is going through a uh, tumultuous time at the moment and I'm wondering, still on this business of nurturing talent, University of Melbourne being accused of breaking up one of the... The great. Uh, I need some background. This is the VCA. The, the VCA, yeah, the Victorian College of the Arts. VCAM, because the musical faculty has also been incorporated for the last couple of years. And it was taken over by the university, is that right? Well, what happened is the federal government cut off its independent funds and the university, in a way, rescued it by embracing it rather than seeing it go under, but it means that they don't have the same income as they used to and they're losing some staff and they're cutting the courses and you know changing the way it's been and the creative community, to come back to that. That phrase are uh, incredibly worried about what it might all mean. So the unique thing about the VCAM is that it is, I think, probably the only institute of that kind as it exists in, in the current model in the world where drama, dance, music, um, um, I think puppetry, uh, there's, but there's about six major disciplines all under the one roof. Uh, and basically what's happening is that um, I know the, the students in, uh, themselves who are currently studying there feel very up in arms because the course is going to become an academic course rather than a practical right. and profound training course mm. for their particular art form, which means that they would have to do a three-year academic course and then another further two years, I believe, if they wanted to go on to practice. Some people don't want to be academics. Mm. Mm. They want to be actors who can really act or singers who can really sing I've supported them by sending a statement. I went online the other day and I looked up the Australian Institute of Sport mission statement. If you change the word athlete oh, to great artist, idea. and if you change the word AIS for the Australian Institute of Sport to the VCAM, and then read the mission statement, you can see the gulf that we have between how a word like elite over the last 10 or 11 years, particularly under the Howard government, was a demonising word, a demonised word. Um, elite in the true sense means um, these people are going to be trained to be highly skilled, virtuosic, and as they say at the end of the AIS statement, find the champion within. If you play in a major orchestra anywhere in the world, you've got to be skilled. You, don't, you can't be too theoretical about it. You know, If you're going to be a dancer in a major company, you've got to really know how to dance. Similarly with acting. It is elitist in the same way that we admire so much in our sports people. I mean, I made a comment again the other night based on this uh, uh, at the Longford Award thing to say, you know, when, when even the head of the VCAM is saying, uh, 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 you know, elite training of artists is a very, very old view. They must be also able to sell the tickets make their own costumes and perform. To me, that's starting education from a point of mediocrity. Mm. Um, well, which, if you don't have any skill or great talent for people to come to see, it doesn't matter if you know how to run a book well, I mean, we would or never, balance We sheet. would never in a million years, for the footy fans of Melbourne, you'd never ex uh, accept that in a, uh, in a Chris Judd or a George Ablett Jr., Ever. You have to do three years of study and then you can yeah. play the when footy. When we look at the great... You know, the Gary great Ablett has to know how to, how to sell tickets Gary, before sorry. you... When, we, when, when you look at the great tennis players, yeah. you think we admire and love this because it is so elite. Well, what, about, what about soldiers? Yeah. You'd want them to be handling the Brain gun, surgeons. wouldn't you? <laughs> wouldn't want to go in, yes. want to go in uh, under the operating knife and, and have somebody who kind of had to make their own gown... And has read all had, about it. Or had to do uh, secretarial work on the side to run his particular practice. But how do we break the grip then of people who think every problem can be solved with some kind of managerial flowchart or grid uh, and the I MBA the model? The bureaucratic na na nature yes. of it is what has driven these kinds of manoeuvres, yeah. is that they just start to look at the number crunching yeah, it's and not progress. The, uh, the ethos involved of what, a, of what an arts well, training is. Where did you learn to is. act? Well, I see, I went to Paris. I'd started well, through practice by joining the Queensland Theatre Company for three years. You went to Lecoq. And then you? I went to the Lecoq School in Paris. Mm. Uh, not dissimilar to, to the kind of structures that VCA has taken on because of institutions like that and various graduates from that school having taught at the VCA. Uh, because I didn't particularly want to... Go, want to go to NIDA at that point. I wanted a school that allowed me to become a performer and theatre maker and find my own individual creativity. 
Um, and if I'm any sort of example of, of what that outcome or what that aspiration might head towards, um, I'd like to think that there's a role model there in some form for other aspiring performers and, and creative artists. But, but there's no equivalent example, surely, of something like Lecoq, the, the famous mime school or its equivalents. Uh, I'm trying to think in New York, what's it called, the Juilliard School or any of the these? The Juilliard and Yale, who all contain that kind of um, professional crossover where, I mean, colleagues of mine who are with me at Lecoq's now hold major tenure at Yale and at Juilliard um, because they recognise there that within the Juilliard School there's music, there's uh, art, there's theatre, etc. And what would happen if you went to those places of excellence, of, of learning of excellence, and said, oh, we're, we're going to change the structure now, we're going to introduce a generalist course and 25% of your subject material has to be outside that of the arts. That would never happen in New York. And yet it's happening the, here. The arts culture in that town is so vibrant and so acute.